Today I've got another list of demo-worthy, must-own 4K titles for new collectors. So let's rock this. Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back, I'm Fuzz. Uh, so today I've got a third installment in what has become a series that I started last year uh, with this video uh, where I offered a list of must-own reference quality 4K movies for those who are new to collecting 4K. And then about a month after that, I followed it up with a sequel video uh, offering more demo-worthy 4K titles. Uh, but then I kind of gave the topic a rest for a while. I just figured it'd be good to give it some time, uh, allow a little more time to pass for uh, new 4K titles to be released or whatnot. But I got to thinking about it the other night and I realized it had been like six months since I'd done one of these videos. Uh, so I figured it was about time to uh, revisit and do an update for this topic. So I've got part three for you guys today, uh, another slate of 10 must-own, potentially demo-worthy 4K movies for new collectors. Now I've got a bit of a qualifier here for you guys because uh, when I say must-own, I'm not just talking about any movie collector out there regardless of whatever their tastes are in movies. When I say must own, what I really mean is uh, for people who are fans of the film, um, they would probably consider it a must own on the format. And when I say demo worthy, uh, I'll be the first to admit that that may be a little bit more uh, subjective and in the eye of the beholder at this point. I mean, I'm on the third installment of this series, so I just don't feel right uh, calling every one of these titles a reference quality disc. Uh, so I use the term demo worthy as kind of a replacement uh, and uh, with the understanding that that may be a little bit subjective depending on who you are and what your tastes in films are. But I can tell you that all of these titles look damn good on 4K, and uh, any one of these could easily uh, be considered a demo-worthy title uh, if you're a fan of the film. Now, if you happen to be new to the channel, if you're just discovering the channel for the first time, uh, please keep in mind that this list is not intended to be a uh, comprehensive, objective list that's going to suit everyone's tastes in movies. That's not what I'm doing here. On this channel, I tend to focus primarily on action, sci-fi, and horror films, uh, and then sometimes I might dip into like crime drama or thrillers a little bit, but the, the main genres that I focus on are uh, action, sci-fi, and horror, or films that could be uh, kind of considered adjacent to those genres. And then occasionally I'll also dip into a little 80s nostalgia that uh, doesn't necessarily fit uh, into those other genre categories, like a John Hughes film or something like that. But many of the physical media releases I tend to discuss on this channel are older uh, catalog movies because I'm a Gen Xer and that's just how I roll. I may throw a more recent movie into the mix occasionally, uh, but for the most part I do tend to focus more on movies that came out in the 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, than I do on newer releases. Uh, that 30 year span of time is just kind of like my golden era, right? Those are the movies that I tend to love the most. So just keep those uh, channel parameters in mind as we roll through these titles. Now, before I get into the list, uh, we do have a couple new channel members that I want to give a quick shout out to. Uh, first up, Dark Side Football uh, just recently became a member of the Fuzz Club. Thank you so much, Dark Side. I really appreciate your support. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, likewise, for uh, The Reasons Why, who also became a member of the Fuzz Club. Uh, reasons Why, thank you so much. Uh, reasons Why, apparently from Australia, which is very cool. Um, believe it or not, I've actually always had had kind of a special place in my heart uh, for Australia. I've always thought Australia was just a really cool place. Uh, and that's no joke. I actually visited there for a couple weeks when I was a kid with my family. Uh, so I've just always loved Australia. Um, also a big fan of the music there as well. So uh, Reasons Why and Dark Side Football, thank you again both so much for your uh, support of the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. And if any of you would like to know more about the Fuzz Club, just click on the Fuzz Club link in the description below, or you can click on that join button below and it will also bring up all the membership information for you. Okay, so let's get right into this list. Uh, now keep in mind, these are in no particular order. This is not a ranking list. Uh, these are not ranked in any particular order of preference. Uh, I am numbering them just so I can keep track of where I'm at in the list, uh, but this is not a ranking. And then like I usually do, I also have some honorable mentions that I'll be tacking on to the end of this list. Uh, so make sure you guys stick around for that as well. 
All right, so for my first selection here, I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about Star Trek. Uh, I don't believe I've ever discussed Star Trek on this channel, and I'm sure uh, I've got some Star Trek fans out there. Um, so uh, for this, uh, this entry, I'm actually including a, a multi-film set. Uh, it is the uh, Star Trek original motion picture six film collection uh, on 4K. And my assumption is uh, that if you're a Star Trek fan, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you pick up uh, these old Shatner films on 4K. Uh, this is a great set. Now, I'll be the first to admit I haven't even had a chance to watch everything in this set. Uh, my personal nostalgia for uh, Star Trek really goes back to uh, the original motion picture and then Wrath of Khan. Those were like the two big ones that I remember seeing in the theater uh, from my childhood. Now, I'll be honest, I've never been uh, nearly as big of a Star Trek fan as other people. I am definitely not a Trekkie. Uh, I always considered myself more partial to uh, Star Wars uh, than Star Trek. But, like I said, I, I do have a little nostalgia for Star Trek. Um, and, uh, you know, seeing uh, the motion picture and Wrath of Khan and I think even Search for Spock in the theaters uh, when I was a kid. And I gotta say, both the motion picture and Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan in here, uh, look amazing on 4K. Uh, colors popping all over the place. Uh, great detail. Uh, you know, the sets just look amazing. So uh, I would definitely recommend, uh, you know, picking up something like this if you're a big Star Trek fan. Um, now, you can also get these films uh, individually. They, they have standalone 4K releases as well. So if you're not into the, uh, the later films in this uh, series, like Voyage Home, Final Frontier, or Undiscovered Country, if you just want to pick up the motion picture and uh, Wrath of Khan, for example, you can do that. There are standalone 4K releases available for those. Now, so far, personally, I've only had a chance to watch the first two movies in this set. I have not had a chance to watch all of the films in this set, but I felt reasonably confident that I could still include it on this list because I know there are a lot of Star Trek fans out there who uh, probably would appreciate having the entire uh, Shatner collection on 4K. But for me personally, uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture and The Wrath of Khan, those were the two big ones for me. Those were the main reason I put this on this list was for those two films. Um, they, the 4Ks look fantastic, so highly recommended. Next up, I've got a fantastic uh, creature film in the form of Tremors from 1990. Uh, this is a fantastic looking 4K put out by Arrow Video. Uh, it really is, I think, a demo worthy 4K um, for those of you who are fans of this film. Uh, this is a film I've always loved, but it had been many, many years since I had seen it uh, prior to picking up this 4K. And, uh, but when I got this 4K, I was pretty uh, impressed with uh, just how good everything looked. Um, it definitely helps that the practical effects in this are amazing. They really shine on 4K, the graboids. Um, and then, uh, you know, just the set locations, the locations they're shooting at, uh, just really lend themselves well uh, to the 4K format. Of course, you got a great cast here with Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, Michael Gross, uh, and Reba McIntyre. Not to mention, this has some killer bonus features on it. Uh, Kevin Bacon actually came back, did interviews uh, for uh, this release or for the uh, the new Universal kind of retrospective documentary that is included in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, this thing's just packed with all kinds of bonus features, all kinds of interviews and whatnot. Uh, this film is just a really fun time. And uh, if you, by some chance, you've never seen this uh, and you're a fan of like creature flicks, but that also kind of blend a little bit of uh, comedy and action into the mix as well. Um, this might be right up your alley. Okay, for my next entry, I actually have uh, an entire franchise here that I am recommending as must-own titles for people who are fans of the franchise. Uh, and I'm talking about the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, I have all of them right here. Just got Dead Reckoning this morning, and I haven't even seen the film yet, so uh, I, that's the only one I haven't seen. But, of course, I, uh, I love the Mission Impossible movies. They are awesome in 4K. And the reason I'm saying they're all, like, must-own on 4K, if you're a fan of the film, again, um, is because of all the killer stunt work and the, the killer uh, in-camera practical effects. That, uh, that this series is known for, right? Um, this is not a series that has relied a whole lot on CGI. I mean, I'm sure there's some CGI in places and whatnot. I can't even remember exactly where, 
but I do know that they do a ton of real stunts and wherever possible, they try to make it look as real and as convincing as possible. And if that means that uh, Tom Cruise is hanging off the side of the Burj Khalifa, climbing the Burj Khalifa, or uh, hanging off the side of a, a cargo jet or whatnot, uh, then so be it. Because those things really happen. Tom Cruise really did that shit. He really was hanging off the side of the Burj Khalifa or hanging off the side of a jet while it was taking off. Just stuff that's like totally nuts, right? Um, but that's what I love about these movies. And that's what makes them so good in 4K. Um, because uh, as we know, or, or you know, many of us know, uh, maybe not everybody knows this, but practical effects... Uh, tend to translate over to 4K the best. Whenever you have real stunt work, real locations, real set pieces, real uh, practical effects, that stuff just looks incredible on 4K and it looks a lot better than CGI usually does uh, because most CGI is uh, rendered at a lower resolution than 4K and so it doesn't necessarily look as, uh, as good as some of the practical stuff actually does. Now, I'm convinced that Tom Cruise is just absolutely crazy with some of the stuff he's willing to do for these movies. Uh, but if I if I were to narrow it down here a little bit, um, there are a couple movies that I do think are standouts uh, for, uh, for 4K. Let me get them real quick here. Um, and that is uh, Fallout. Love Fallout. It's a really good film, and uh, it just looks stunning in 4K. And you've got some shifting aspect ratios in this as well, which uh, I always think is really cool. Uh, you know, Christopher Nolan does that a lot, and then, of course, uh, Christopher McQuarrie uh, does that here as well. But just a great film. Uh, and then the other one that I would uh, kind of narrow it down to is uh, Ghost Protocol. Uh, absolutely love uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is the one where he's climbing the Burj Khalifa and it just looks wow in 4K. Yeah, it looks amazing. It really does. So, um, yeah, if you don't have these Mission Impossible films, they all look good in 4K. Uh, but really, I'd say 4, uh, 5, and 6 look the best. Um, 5 being uh, Rogue Nation here. This also looks incredible on 4K. Um, really, I feel this is one of those franchises where I feel like the films just keep getting better and better and better. Um, now, I, again, I haven't seen uh, Dead Reckoning yet, so uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, if I'm going to consider that better than Fallout, but uh, yeah, the last few films that they did before Dead Reckoning were all just total bangers and they look amazing in 4K. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think if you're a fan of this series, you definitely owe it to yourself to pick all these up on 4K uh, at your earliest convenience. Next up, uh, I've got what some might consider kind of a fringe sci-fi movie, um, but it's so much fun. Uh, and that's 1980s Flash Gordon. Uh, Great, great Arrow 4K release that really looks stunning. Um, I don't know how many of you remember this one. I actually saw this in the theater when I was a kid. And prior to getting this, I uh, I barely had remembered uh, even the movie itself. But um, it, it all came back to me once I popped it in and started watching it. Um, but man, does this thing look good on 4K. Uh, the costumes that they have, the, the set designs and the costumes, the elaborate costumes they have uh, just look spectacular on the format. The colors on this pop like you wouldn't believe. Um, you got a great cast here. You got Sam Jones, you got uh, Melody Anderson, and the uh, the great Max von Sydow. So uh, yeah, if you've never seen this, I, you know, I, I'll be honest, it's a totally cheesy film, right? It's a little silly. But, um, you know, for those of us who uh, grew up in the 70s and 80s, um, you guys might appreciate this new uh, Arrow 4K restoration. Well, it's not new. It's been out for a few years now. But uh, for people who are fans of this film, uh, I would say this is definitely a demo-worthy release. Uh, and then you also have some awesome bonus features in it. You got a ton of interviews with everyone. Oh, and don't forget, uh, Queen did the soundtrack for this movie. Uh, and there's even an interview with Brian May uh, included here. Here. So uh, Queen did a great soundtrack for this. Uh, you know, some people might have even liked the soundtrack more than the movie. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a, a piece of nostalgia that I absolutely had to add to my collection. And, um, you know, if you're a fan of this film, I would say you definitely can't go wrong with the Arrow 4K.
Uh, moving on now to a little horror here for a couple titles. Uh, for you horror fans out there, um, if you don't have this one on 4K and you're a fan of the film, a fan of the genre in general, this is definitely a must-own on the format, and that is Pumpkinhead, starring Lance Hendrickson. This is an awesome 4K release. It looks incredible. Uh, it really does. Um, directed by the great Stan Winston, who uh, we know from practical effects and Terminator and Aliens and so many other things. Uh, well, you know, he did not disappoint uh, with this film at all. Um, it's a kind of a creature film. I guess you could call it a creature film. And the, uh, the pumpkin head creature effects in this, the practical effects in this, just look stunning in 4K. Um, really, this, this just looks ridiculously good. Um, great locations, great set pieces, and uh, amazing atmosphere as well. All of this translates over to 4K in uh, probably the best way possible. Uh, this is just a, a banger release from Scream Factory. So yeah, if you're a fan of this film, if you're a fan of the genre, uh, I definitely consider this a must-own uh, on the 4K format. Uh, also from Screen Factory, another just incredible looking 4K release, and that is The Blob, uh, also from 1988, just like Pumpkinhead. Um, this is another one. I got this and Pumpkinhead around the same time last year, and I was blown away by both. I really was. This looks amazing in 4K. The, uh, the blob effects look awesome. Um, it, the image just looks pristine. Uh, it, it really did uh, translate really well to 4K. Now, there are some, some visual effects uh, in a couple spots that maybe are showing their age a little bit, um, where you can kind of see a little bit more of the man behind the curtain on 4K, but that's okay. Uh, for the most part, that's not really an issue with this film at all. See, for me, I actually almost consider this to be kind of the, the quintessential, the perfect uh, drive-in B-movie, the ultimate drive-in B-movie, and you definitely get those cool drive-in vibes uh, when you're watching this 4k uh the restoration they did on this is just really really good and you know uh, scream factory doesn't really disappoint on their restorations they're known for uh delivering some really high quality looking images uh from their uh their horror collection so and this is certainly no exception there so yeah if you don't have the blob on 4k yet and you're a fan of this film uh, this is one i would definitely recommend picking up uh when you get the chance all right, next up, we got a little Michael Bay action here, a more recent film, and that is Ambulance. Uh, this is a great film and a great 4K release. Um, if you're a big fan of like uh, old school Michael Bay, like The Rock or Armageddon, um, I felt like this was a bit of a return to form uh, for Michael Bay. Uh, you know, I, I thought this was the best movie he'd probably done since The Rock. So, uh, well, since The Rock and Armageddon, since those days. You know, I kind of felt like this was a, a bit of a throwback to uh, Michael Bay's classic work. And if you're a fan of just uh, good old-fashioned balls-to-the-wall action films, uh, this is one you definitely can't go wrong with. Uh, the 4K looks amazing. Uh, and some of the cool stuff Michael Bay does with the camera in this movie is awesome. There's some great uh, panning shots and some sweeping zooms and like all kinds of crazy stuff he does with the camera that just looks awesome. And, uh, and the 4K looks amazing. This also has a really good audio track as well. I know a lot of people were pretty blown away by the audio. Um, I don't have a Dolby Atmos system, so I can't like totally evaluate this. Uh, I'm still using just a 5.1 uh, surround system, but uh, it sure sounded good to me when I watched it. So this is essentially a, a heist film, right? A heist gone wrong, if you've never seen the film. Um, so yeah, uh, just a great uh, return to form from Michael Bay, I thought, and uh, a real banger of a 4K release as well. So uh, yeah, if you're a Michael Bay fan, I would say this is a must own. Moving on next to a little Charles Bronson, uh, I chose Death Wish 1 and 2 on 4K. These are the only two Death Wish movies that have 4K releases, and uh, I'll be honest, the one that really uh, made me think about putting these titles on this list was Death Wish 2. Uh, Death Wish 2 was put out by Vinegar Syndrome, Death Wish 1 by Kino Lorber, but uh, the Vinegar Syndrome restoration for Death Wish 2 is just amazing. It looks so good. It actually took me by surprise the first time I watched it. I couldn't believe how good it looked. Uh, but uh, the Kino Lorber release of Death Wish 1, that's no slouch either. This thing looks 
probably the best it's ever looked. Um, it really does look fantastic. Uh, you, you know, the HDR really helps this one. There's a lot of dark uh, nighttime scenes and you can see a lot of detail in those areas. But um, yeah, I mean, these are not like, I would not call these reference quality discs, but if you're a fan of Charlie Bronson, if you're a fan of these Death Wish films in general, then I do think both of these are uh, must-own titles uh, for your collection. Uh, my thinking here was, even though I feel like Death Wish 2 is the standout here between the two, um, I didn't feel right just putting a sequel on the list, but not putting the, the original film to go with it. And uh, they do both look fantastic in 4K. You really can't go wrong uh, with these uh, releases. All right, next up, dipping back into horror a little bit here, we have An American Werewolf in London. Uh, another just fantastic release from Arrow Video. You know, Arrow Video really does a great job in general. They're one of my favorite boutiques. Uh, I think I have seldom, if ever, been disappointed by any of their restorations. The, the work they do is just uh, incredible. It really is. And, uh, you know, this is certainly no exception. Um, now, I got the, uh, the chunky box here. Uh, I don't know if these are available uh, anymore. I think they're probably out of print. I mean, you can still get them on, like, eBay or the secondary market or whatnot, but uh, this was a limited edition box set that uh, may or may not be available anymore. It may have gone out of print. But if that's the case, if the box set is out of print and uh, a lot harder to find, you can always just get the uh, special edition version. Uh, Arrow does sell a version that's just the Amaray case uh, where you get the disc in the Amaray case. You just don't get the fancy packaging. And uh, by the way, this is reversible cover art. I believe the other side of it is just that. Um, but yeah, this just looks incredible uh, on 4K. The, uh, the, the werewolf transformation effects look better than they ever have before. Um, it's just really a stunning image that uh, is easily the best this film has ever looked. So uh, yeah, if you don't have American Werewolf in London from Arrow Video on 4K, I would definitely uh, recommend adding this to your collection, especially if you are a big fan of werewolves, because uh, this is considered by many to be one of the greatest uh, werewolf movies of all time. So yeah, American Werewolf in London. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, do me a favor and please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well when you do, uh, so you can be alerted when I'm posting videos that you might dig. Uh, also, don't forget to hit the like button as well. It really does help with the channel's uh, visibility out there on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All right, and then for my last title here, at least on this list of 10, uh, we've got an absolute classic here that I really do think is a must own uh, for any collection, at least assuming you're a fan of these films, and that is uh, the Godfather trilogy, of course, right? Um, this is just a, a banger of a 4K set, um, and I do believe it's a, a must-own for, uh, for pretty much any collector. I mean, what a classic, right? This is considered by some people to be, uh, you know, one of the greatest film series of all time, or certainly the first two Godfather films at the very least. Uh, now, if you don't like all three of the Godfather films, uh, you can buy these uh, individually. I believe there are standalone releases uh, for Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Godfather 3, or I guess it's called uh, Godfather Coda now, the uh, death of Michael Corleone. Uh, that's the new uh, Francis Ford Coppola version, a new cut of the film. Uh, and that's actually the only thing I haven't seen in this set yet. I've watched the first two, but I haven't gotten around to seeing the uh, the third Godfather movie here. I, you know, I've seen it before, uh, but uh, it's not something that uh, I've seen in many, many years. So, uh, but I'm very curious to see what Francis Ford Coppola did uh, with this new cut. But when I watched the first one and the second one, I was just blown away by how good it looked. Now, I'll tell you what really uh, convinced me to pull the trigger on this 4K uh, was a, a video I saw on YouTube that's taken from the special features in here. Uh, there's like a 15 minute uh, little featurette where they, they go over how they perform the restoration on these titles, all the things they did to uh, restore these for the uh, 50th anniversary release. And uh, I was pretty 
pretty blown away by the work that they did on this. I, I really was. Um, you know, I have this on Blu-ray as well, and I almost didn't even upgrade this to 4K, but when I saw that video uh, about restoring these Godfather films and all the stuff that they did to make these things look amazing, yeah, I was like, yeah, I got to own that. And, uh, you know, I got to say, these did not disappoint at all. You know, I watched the first and second film, and they both looked amazing and uh, easily the best I have ever seen these films look. It was pretty impressive stuff. So uh, I won't say too much about The Godfather because we all know what The Godfather is, right? Um, I mean... It's one of the more classic films of all times. Now, this is more of a crime drama, right? This isn't exactly the uh, action, sci-fi, and horror that I usually discuss on this channel, but I figured this is such a classic that, uh, you know, we just have to talk about it. And I figured a lot of people who watch this channel would probably be interested uh, in hearing about this because uh, it just does have such a... It, these are such beloved films uh, that, uh, you know, there's a huge fan base out there for these films. So... Um, yeah, if you haven't picked up the Godfather uh, trilogy on 4K, I would highly recommend it. These are definitely uh, must-own titles for the collection. Uh, another honorable mention is a film that uh, really took me by surprise. Someone recommended this to me when I first got into 4K collecting, and uh, you know, I, it was kind of an unexpected recommendation, and it probably will be to you guys as well. Uh, for those of you who are into live-action superhero films, 2003's The Hulk looks amazing on 4K. I was surprised at just how damn good this looked. Now, I don't know how many of you are fans of this film even. Um, you know, I always thought it was a decent film. This was directed by Ang Lee, and he does some really cool stuff with the uh, the execution of this film. He uses a lot of split screens and uh, really funky transitions and weird zooms and like all kinds of cool stuff to actually make it seem more like a comic book has come alive on the screen, right? And uh, I think he pulled it off. I think he did a great job with this. Um, good cast, too. You've got uh, Eric Bana, uh, Jennifer Connelly, Nick Nolte, and Sam Elliott. Um, and uh, yeah, this there's a lot of practical stuff in this film. Uh, there is some CGI, and the CGI maybe looks a little bit dated now, but uh, there's a lot of practical stuff in this film that really shines on 4K. So um, if by some chance you're a fan of the Hulk, uh, fan of this film, uh, I do think this is a, uh, a must-own uh, on the format. Another must-own on the format for uh, John Carpenter fans is uh, They Live. Uh, on 4K, this just looks incredible. It, this is truly a, a beautiful image on 4K. Uh, really does look stunning. And uh, probably one of the uh, the better-looking uh, John Carpenter 4Ks out there. Um, you know, I don't know if it quite rivals the thing on 4K. That is, like, one of the best 4Ks out there, but... It's pretty damn close. This looks really good. Um, of course, I got the uh, 4K Steelbook here from uh, Scream Factory. Very cool uh, artwork. You know, I just had to do it. Um, I do believe this is also available as just a uh, like a standard edition with the slipcover. You know, it probably doesn't have a slipcover anymore. Those are probably, uh, are probably long gone now. But you can also buy this on a standard edition if you don't want to go with this Steelbook. Um, just a fantastic looking 4K and a must own for any John Carpenter fan, which uh, I definitely am. Uh, next up, another honorable mention, and the only reason this is in my honorable mentions is because I just got done talking about this movie in my last video on uh, the James Cameron releases, but this is a must-own in my book, and that is The Abyss. I'm not going to say too much about it because, like I said, I just did a big thing on these James Cameron releases, uh, but... Uh, yeah, if you don't own The Abyss on 4K, I mean, this is a must-own. The last time this was even available, uh, officially released, was on a DVD. So I won't say too much about this one, but if you didn't get a chance to check out my uh, my James Cameron 4K Takeaways video, uh, make sure you check it out when you're done here. Another one I've talked about on the channel uh, fairly recently. I guess it's been a couple months since it's come up, but uh, uh, if you like big, uh, bombastic, uh, 90s action films, and you're a John Woo fan, you got to get Face Off on 4K. Uh, this looks just awesome on 4K. But uh, there's definitely an upgrade uh, on this 4K. This just looks uh, immaculate. Uh, there's so much great detail, so much uh, depth and pop 
uh, to the image that, uh, yeah, I think anybody who's a fan of John Woo, a fan of big 90s action movies, um, this is a must own uh, for those types of uh, collectors. So uh, yeah, Face Off on 4K from Kino Lorber, uh, an amazing release, it really is. And then last up, another one I've talked about in the, in recent months, because uh, it was a newer release that came out uh, at the end of last year, and that is The Fugitive. Uh, Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, this is a stunning looking release. Uh, I believe it was actually sourced from an 8K scan of the original camera negative. And, uh, you know, it just looks like uh, they put a lot of care and time into it. Uh, it's really an amazing looking image. Incredible detail, incredible depth. Uh, uh, the image just has this nice vibrancy to it that you just can't deny. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, the best it's ever looked on home media. So uh, yeah, if you haven't picked up The Fugitive yet on 4K and you're a fan of this film, it's another one of those that I definitely think is a must own. So uh, yeah, The Fugitive. Okay, so that about wraps up my part three video uh, of uh, must own uh, demo worthy 4K movies for new collectors. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think of my choices here? Uh, do you have any of these choices? And uh, if so, do you agree with my assessment of these choices? Um, I always love hearing from you guys, so make sure you leave some feedback down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, share if you're feeling so inclined. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.